Hello, random YouTube people. Do you want to know how I turned my home network cables from this into this? Stick around. Hey, subscribe. And don't worry, I'm gonna be splitting this video into chapters because there's a lot to talk about. Hooray, fiber optics coming next week. So I'm gonna have them run the fiber line in with all these other cables. These are the existing phone cables and the Comcast coax cables. Now I don't want all of these cords running along the bottom and the fiber company wants the modem or their modem mounted to a wall. And so I have two choices, either here where all of the cords are coming through or down over here next to the breaker box. But in the past, I have had a water leak from a spigot line that's right above all of this electrical stuff, which is awesome. I'd love to talk to the builder about that one. Now, every situation is different. In my situation, they've installed this breaker box directly to the concrete wall. You can see as I pull back the insulation, it's just right there connected directly to the wall. So we're going to be adding this new networking box for all of our equipment, which will be the new fiber optic modem and the existing Comcast lines and the phone lines and things like that. You can see in the pictures, if I were to put a screw here, it's gonna go directly into the concrete and I don't really want to drill out every single hole to be able to drill into the concrete. So that's why I'm going to add a piece of wood as a backer so that I attach this to the concrete and attach the box to this. Concerning connecting something to concrete, I already did this for my main water line. By code, it can't wobble around like it was, so I shot in with a nail gun this piece of pressure treated wood so that I could stabilize the water line. So I'm going to do that same thing with the network box. To be out of the way for a future leak, if that happens, I've decided to put it on this wall over here. First, gonna push this jumble of wires out of the way. Gonna hook it onto this rebar piece, which is probably the ground for the breaker box, just to get these wires out of the way. I'm now holding up the Legend network box as a template to see how much insulation I need to cut out. All of the products you see will be linked in the description. When working with insulation, remember eye protection is best. So I'm just using a box cutter or a razor blade to cut through the insulation. Using a cut to size, three quarter inch thick piece of particle board and my favorite liquid nails to adhere to the concrete. The liquid nails will not be strong enough by itself to hold this particle board to the wall. So I'm also going to be using my single shot powder actuated nail gun. Make sure to wear hearing protection. These single shot powder actuated nail guns use a 22 caliber powder actuated load or charge to fire the nail to the wall. It's kind of like a shell you'd find in a 22 handgun. So in other words, be extremely careful. The one I got has a trigger you can pull that will shoot the nail. Others, you have to hammer it in. But because I'm trying to do this one-handed and by myself, the one with the trigger is much easier. I shot this nail too close to the corner of the wood and it didn't go through. Now that my wood piece is secure to the wall, it's time to secure the Legrand network box with the provided screws. In the new electrical box, I have the option to knock these things out here, this to run in some wires, and the one I'm really interested in is this one where I can knock this out and add an outlet. The outlet I'm going to add is this one here with a built-in surge protector. So I'll have the outlet either up here or at the bottom. I haven't decided yet, but this will provide built-in surge protection for the appliances plugged in, such as the modem and the router. Before I add the outlet, I need to run power to the outlet. So what I'm going to do is connect to the existing GFCI in this utility room, which is located all the way over here. 
So this is the one and only outlet in the basement right now. So I'm going to run a wire from here through the ceiling and then down over to the electrical box. The wire that I'm going to be using is a 14 gauge by two, which means there's two wires, a black and a white, and then there's always a ground wire inside. So this is the wire I'm going to run between the two points. If you don't know what kind of wire you need, you can look at your breaker panel. In my case, that GFCI is associated to number 22 here. And if I look for number 22, right here, you can see it's a 15 amp breaker. A 15 amp is gonna require a 14 gauge wire. A 12 gauge wire is what you use if you're using a 20 gauge or sorry, a 20 amp breaker. So in this case, since we're 15 amp, we want to use a 14 gauge wire. One thing I would like to mention is you can use a 12 gauge wire on a 15 amp breaker. The 12 gauge wire is thicker and can support a higher load. And you're even less likely to overheat if you have a bigger wire on a 15 amp. However, you do not want to use a 14 gauge wire on a 20 amp breaker. Another thing to mention is if you have a 15 amp outlet like this and you're using a 12 gauge wire, you might not be able to put it in the quick connect holes on the back. So you're gonna be forced to wrap it around the nut. But that's actually a better connection if you wrap the wire around the nut instead of directly connecting into the back here. I actually just had a GFCI upstairs where I unhooked it from the wall and this just fell right on out. It wasn't even snug when I put it in through the back. I would recommend you wrap the wire around the nut always. Now with my bald head in full view, you can see I am fishing the wires through the ceiling joists from the network box over to the GFCI on the other side. Now running the wires through the top plate in the wall down to the GFCI electrical box. With the power turned off at the breaker, I am now disassembling the outlet, taking off the faceplate, and getting to the wires behind the outlet. Now I am just examining how the lines are coming into the electrical box and how they connect to the outlet, so I can figure out how to connect my new wire coming into the same box. And let me just tell you how hard it was to get my head into this area between the HVAC system and the water heater to see this electrical box. Now just feeding the new wire into the electrical box. I didn't realize this until after doing this install, but this GFCI controls the outside as well. So I had my hot tub plugged up to this and I just went and tested and the hot tub is working. This is live. So I have the new line coming in and the black gets attached to the black, the white gets attached to the white, the ground gets attached to the ground. And what I did was do a pigtail to the lower terminal. I'm gonna try to not touch it and shock myself. So there's a pigtail that comes out up to the white. There's a pigtail on the other side that comes out black, where originally that was just one line going in. So now it um, comes out and splits into two lines. So we have three lines coming off this GFCI right now. So now I've just got to put it back together and we'll go wired up on the other side. It's working. Well, I have the line tucked in tight and I have the line running down. I have plenty of extra 14-2 wire, but I think I'm going to clip it about right here just so that I have some extra to play with. I'm gonna start by running my new power cable behind the insulation and into the box. And as part of that, I'm going to clip out this section to drop in my new outlet right here. I'm coming through on the top side with a razor blade and just cutting through these little tabs on the side. Now that that little tab template has been cut out, it's time to push up the gain box from the inside, like so. I'm again using the kind that have these little tabs. So when you tighten the screw, the tabs hold it on tight. So just when you're pushing this up, make sure that these are tucked out of the way. 
so they can clear into the hole there. While installing, I'm noticing that this hole isn't quite big enough to fit this gang box in, so I'm going to cut it a little wider so that I can slide it in nice and tight. That's what she said. All right, after way too much time of cutting and getting it to the exact same size, which is bigger than I expected, I am finally able to run my wire. I pre-opened this tab so I can shove my wire right on in there. So I have plenty of extra wire. I'm gonna go ahead and cut back to right where it enters in the box and then give myself probably about six inches of wire to work with. Clipping off the extra wire and down to about here. Using my wire strippers, I stripped about an inch off the black and the white. Now I'm gonna use my needle nose pliers to make a little hook for it to wrap around the outlet on the, the terminals. Now on my surge protector outlet, I'm going to wrap the cables around the white. Um, so the white goes on the silver, the black goes on the gold, and then the ground goes on the green. I like to have the wire going around the nut or the screw clockwise. So when you screw it down, it tightens the wire into the spin to the right instead of backing it back out. So, so final look at the wiring. The black goes around the gold and I have it going around clockwise. White goes on the silver, have it around clockwise. And of course the gold or the copper goes in the ground. So last part is to push this back up into the gang box and screw it down and put on the faceplate. All right, time to flip the breaker. And just a word to the wise, don't over tighten. <laughs> wow. Now that the hard part's over, it's time to run the wires under or behind the insulation and down through this hole here. I might end up opening the one on the bottom and bringing the wires down and then coming back up, um, depending on the kind of wire. We'll see how. As you can see now, I'm undoing all of these wires, how they were connected together, and I'm going to run them behind the insulation down into the new network box through that top hole. Well, there's a lot more work to be done. With that bundle of cables that was just dangling here is now out of the way behind the insulation and coming out of the box. Of course, I still need some stuff. Can't quite do it yet, but I think that's enough work for today. But everything's working and we're no longer plugged in over here. Sweet. So this is really exciting. So this is my main floor. This is the behind the TV in our family room. And I have my coax cable coming in and I'm gonna ditch Comcast and go with fiber optic. But this is the regular phone jack. Now you can see if I pull this out of the wall, this cable is actually a Cat 5E cable, but they're only using the blue and blue and white lines for the phone. So I can use these extra cables to turn this into an ethernet port. But what's even more exciting is because I have an unfinished basement, um, you can see if I pull on the Cat 5 cable, it comes right on up through. So let's go downstairs and check it out. So downstairs at what will become my new home networking panel. These are all of the lines for Comcast and also the two Cat E cables. One goes upstairs because I have a two story, but the other one we were just looking at um, runs along here. And if we come over underneath the family room where we just were and pull away the insulation a little bit, you can see where the Comcast cable or the coax cable and the ethernet line run. But what's nice is I can pull on this. It's not attached to anything. So this is the perfect opportunity for me to replace this Cat 5E cable with a Cat 6 cable. Well, my Cat 6 cable showed up. I got about 35 feet, which should be all that I need for my application because I'm not gonna be able to run it upstairs. So I'm just gonna do the main level. And I got an adapter 
to switch the phone line to an ethernet and a coax cable because right now they're both in the same. There's a phone jack and the coax. But I had a thought. My initial was to replace the whole line with the Cat6 cable. But I had an idea um, to leave the existing line, which is a Cat5e, which is only being used as a phone line right now. For resale purposes of my home, I thought it would be best to leave that line in place and run this line in addition to it and get a new wall plate that is Cat6, Cat3, and then the coax. So that's my new plan, is to leave the line in place, but to run a new one. So now I'm downstairs under the family room where the wires are running up to the main level, and I can't quite get my Cat6 cable up this hole. Well, I encountered a little snag. This is upstairs going down, and these cables are both nailed to the wall right here. I'm getting a long screwdriver, and I'm gonna to try to pop that now free so that I can pull the lines down through the wall. Well, I was able to reach a long screwdriver down there and pry this um, nail off the wall. Now it's probably against code, but this is the only way I'm gonna be able to run a new line is to get this free. So let's move on. Back upstairs, I'm using my fish tape and I have electrical taped it to the Cat5e cable and I'm going to pull that back downstairs. So once I'm downstairs, I can pull the other line back through. Well, I have success. I now have the fish tape run down through the hole in the floor joist attached to the wire. And now I'm gonna pull back up the Cat6 cable. Well, Cat6 cable, um, electrical taped to the fish tape, which is also pulling back up the phone line or the Cat5e cable. So, wish me luck. And success. I had to yoink pretty hard. I hope I didn't damage the cable, but we'll find out. I tell you what, I decided to run another Cat6 line and I'll explain why, but fish tape. Man, this stuff has been invaluable to me on so many projects. And this has helped me to get the Cat6 wire, or at least the main level, I should say. But man, fish tape, it's so awesome. I'd recommend it. And no, I'm not sponsored, not yet. Get on board, Southwire. We need some sponsorships over here. Anyways, that's enough to plug that. Next step for me is to take the other end of the Cat6 cable and run it along the same path that the current Cat5e and the coax line go. All the way over to my new network box, way over there. Following the existing cable and phone lines, I had to go over this HVAC system and in order to reach, I had to get creative and get a shower curtain rod to pull the cables over. All right, friends, we are on the home stretch. So here's my Cat6 cable coming into my new network box. The next step is I need to get all the stuff installed, clean up these coax cables, separate these phone lines into their separate pieces, leaving the phone line hooked up for the family room, but turning the one to the master bedroom into an actual ethernet cable. We're almost there. At this point, I'm still waiting for fiber to show up. So we're gonna talk about changing this Cat5e cable to be a phone line with RJ11 connectors on both ends. When installing the RJ11 connector, we're of course not gonna have the wires this long. They were just already this long, so I thought I'd describe this um, while they're easy to see. So you see in a Cat5e cable, you have um, green and a green and white line, an orange, orange and white, blue, blue and white, and brown, brown and white. And we're only going to be using the orange and the blue for our RJ11. So we can just clip those off, but I'm gonna to need to cut this line a little shorter so that we're not using as much wire, but we're only gonna use the orange and the blue for our RJ11. So what you are going to need for this project is some RJ11 connectors. I'll put a link to these in the description below. And then a crimping tool this allows you to cut the phone line as well as crimp on those connectors onto a line. This one has the ability to do an RJ11 and a ethernet, which is RJ45. So if you don't have any of these, I'll put a link in the description. I happen to get these from my dad, but I'll try to get you the same kind of thing. Well, I'm in a little bit of a tight space, but I'm gonna try to get this on video for you. So on these crimper tools, you'll see that you have the ability to snap a line or cut it 
And then you can also um, just strip off part of the wire as well. But for now, I'm going to run this into my, oh, like this, through this little hole here actually. And then just cut off this line here so we don't have all these extra wires. And so to do this next part, you can see on these crimper tools, I would cut right here. If I flip it around, this razor blade on the other side is a little bit longer. There's a little bit of a gap there, but then there's also this other section here, which just kind of scores the line around. So what we're going to do is put the wire in and cut it and kind of just go around the wire a little bit, and then we can pull it off and that should strip off a section of wire so we can get rid of the sheathing around it. So let's try to give that a shot, I'm trying to get it on video. All right, so I want to cut it a little bit and you don't need a lot of length because going into those connectors, you don't need a lot of cord. So just about, let's say, this long or so, okay. And I'm going to cut and just kind of go around and spin this to try to score the edges on this wire a little bit. All right, that should be good. And then I can pull off and you can see that it cut off just a little bit and I have my wires exposed. You're gonna wanna go through and make sure that you didn't cut off any of these wires along the process. We don't need green, but we do want orange and blue. This is brown. So let's push the brown out of the way. When it gets smaller, it's a little harder to interact with, but eventually we're just gonna clip these right off and use just the green and, or sorry, the blue and orange. So we're gonna just cut these extra cables off. We don't need them. And the green, just like that. So all we have is orange and blue. Okay, so while we're down here, we're going to unstrand these so that they're not touching like so. Harder than it looks when you're looking through the camera lens. So the sequence is going to be this, the white orange cable, then you have the solid blue. So let's bring the solid blue over here. And then it's going to go light blue. Let's put that on the other side and then solid orange. So this is how it's going to be inserted into your RJ11 connector. Whoops, let's flip that around one more time. It should be, there you go. White, orange, solid blue, white, blue, and then orange. So grab your RJ11 four pin connector and we're going to do it this way. So if the little clip release here is on the bottom like that, then the orange, I'm tilting this up, you can see, the solid orange would be on the right. So if we have it this way and we have the clip facing us or facing up, the solid is going to be on, the solid orange is gonna be on the right like this. Makes sense. And then you just start inserting them into the little pin holes. So I'm gonna to start to push this down into the connector. Okay, very hard to tell, I'm sure, on the video, but you can see that the wires run up and hit that little brass plate. And if you can see that, we've got our sequence in the correct order. Let's try the other side. There you go. So solid orange on my right side, um, white and orange on the left. And then I have the sequence as I explained, white and orange, solid blue, white and blue, and then solid orange. All right, next we grab our crimping tool and you'll see that I have the ethernet port here and then the RJ11 one down here. We're working with an RJ11, so it's the smaller one. And you can see these little knockouts there are meant for the pin release to be in that direction. You'll only be able to put these in a certain way. You can see if I try to put it in this side, it's not letting me. But if I flip it over and put it in, of course, the knockout here for the pin should be on the bottom. Then it's going to let me push it in all the way. And of course you just click and clamp, and you're good. 
it's all crimped on there. You can see it's um, pushed a little hole right there into the into the uh, connector. And we can even do a little tug test just to make sure. Yep, it's on there good. So next we need to go and do the same thing downstairs to the end of this phone line. And then I'm going to put one on the incoming phone line as well. There we go, family room. Well, we are one step closer to eliminating all of this mess here. So this arrived in the mail the other day and I'm ready to get it installed. It's an eight way coax switch and it's got a little mount that is designed to fit inside this Legrand box that you just mount up on the edge. And then my wires can come straight down right into it. So let's set this set up and see what it looks like. Oh yeah, it's a beautiful thing, it's coming along. You can see I put the little panel in and the cable eight-way splitter fits nice right behind it. Now, granted, some cable people might tell you that you shouldn't split this line this many ways, but I really was wanting to just consolidate it into a nice, clean area inside this electrical box. I did push up the cable up through the insulation, so you can see it bulges a little bit more than it did. So I'm going to have to go in there and wrap the cables together with zip ties so that they don't push up the insulation. But really, that's not the end of the world. This is an unfinished basement, but now at least the cable is out of the way. I still have my cable coming into my current Comcast modem because I don't have fiber just yet. They should be coming tomorrow. Fiber, baby. Well, this is how they installed the modem. I did not like it. It takes up too much room in my box. And so I called them right back to have them flip it. I tried to flip it myself, but man, those fiber lines are very sensitive. So you have to have a professional do it because you don't want to mess it up. Boom, baby. I had the guy install it on the side like this so I'd have plenty of room to add additional things over here. So I spent some time cleaning up some of the cables under the insulation so it doesn't pop off the wall too bad. And now I've changed my plan. I was originally going to connect this line that goes up to the master bedroom um, so that I could have a direct line from the modem, or from the router, I should say. Modem to router, then router to this Cat5e cable that go all the way upstairs in the two-story to the master bedroom. But I figured that I can't do that very well because of all the, the specific scenarios going on here. So what I have done is I've actually ran me a second Cat6 cable. So what's gonna happen is there's going to be the cable that goes from the um, fiber optic modem. Then I'm gonna have a Cat6 cable, probably the green one that I've labeled here, go up to the main level to behind the TV area. And then that's going to power the router and the router will provide Wi-Fi and direct connectivity um, right from there. But then also I'm going to send back out the line down this other Cat6 cable. And that Cat6 cable is going to connect here to a ethernet switch. And then that ethernet switch is going to send the line back up through the master bedroom Cat5e cable. Let's see if I can provide some kind of a drawing or a diagram of what I'm talking about and why. Again, every house is different. I'm going to have the fiber ran into my basement, which is where the fiber modem is going to be. And I'm going to run a Cat6 line up to my main level, right by where my TV is. And that's where I'm going to put my router. And in order to get the signal to go upstairs through the existing Cat5e cable, I need to run a second Cat6 line back down stairs to a switch so that that cable can be plugged into the switch to go upstairs. All right, back upstairs on the main level. This is behind the TV in the family room on the main level. We were just down in the basement where I had ran two Cat6 cables up from there. We also have our regular coax line and just a regular Cat5e cable that has a RJ11 or a phone jack on it. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have this wall plate I found I have a Cat6, two Cat6s. Then I'm gonna pop this one out and replace it with the Cat5e. And then I'll have my um, coming up from the, um, the modem um, to this line here. 
This will connect to the router up here. And then the router will send out a line that connects here. And this will send it all the way back down to the basement to that ethernet switch. And that switch is gonna send it up to the master bedroom with that Cat5e cable. Hopefully that makes sense. All products and things you see in this video, I will have links for in the description. So I got this one on Amazon and I need to pop out this Cat6 for a Cat3 because this is gonna be the phone line. I have my RJ11 right here. So I had purchased before this one because I was only gonna have one Cat6 at the time. But this one has a Cat6 and a Cat3. And so I'm gonna take this Cat3 connection and replace this one with the Cat3. I'll try to get this on video. You can see that it just kind of clips in there. So if you press down and rotate back, this just pops right on out. Then I have the replacement Cat3. Can't even see that on the video, can you? Cat3. And just insert it the same way. Can't do these one handed. There you go, clips in. And now we have two Cat6. Cat 3 and a coax. Let's get it hooked up. I have it all connected from the back and I'm remembering that my green line is this first one here on the left. Um, so this will be coming out of the router and then this is gonna go, be going back out of the router. I'm using green as in. Um, future people will just have to figure that out, I guess, but that's what I'm gonna do. I'll probably try to label it better down at the network box, but let's put the space back back on. And there we are. Base plate back installed. All right, here we are with the Cat6 coming out of the fiber modem into the router. And we have the wire coming, or the Cat6 coming out of the router and back down the stairs. And we can see that the router has, it's a blue light, meaning that it's all set up and ready to go. And we are running on fiber. Well, here are my new speeds with fiber optic. Before with Comcast, I was getting maybe 200 down and only five megabytes up. So this is quite an improvement, as you can see. I also found this power strip and all of these twist so I can get the right angle. And I'm hoping that that's going to fit inside my box just fine. It looks like it should and hopefully that will allow me to power all of the devices inside the network box. All right, well, I've ran through so many different options, uh, different power strips, different, so many different ideas. And what I've come to find is it's just too big to have a surge protector like this inside the box with all the other things I still need to put in. I have the, just the ethernet switch. I have my, this is a, for smoke detectors and for water sensors. So this is a little thing I wanted to keep down here in the box. Granted, I could put this upstairs with the router, but I was trying to put everything that I could inside the box, but I just don't have enough room for something like this. So I thought, well, why not mount it outside and have the power strips come out because the little flaps that go, grabbing it one-handed, Got a little cutout so I can run the wires through here. So my plan is now, I keep changing plans on you guys, is to mount this underneath so it will sit like this on the outside. How I'm gonna do that is this has these little clips and screws. And so I'm going to have a piece of wood sitting here and use these clamps to hold it in place. That piece of wood that I have is a one and a half by one, one half. So it's gonna sit up here, be held in place by those clips, and then I will pretty much probably just zip tie it into place, holding it there. So I'll show you my end result. Alrighty, here's the finished and end result. So there's no more big jumble of coax cable wires hanging down over here, covering up the fuse box there. And I have my new networking box here. It certainly didn't turn out like I expected originally, but I made a lot of changes along the way. One being this power strip down here at the bottom. I couldn't fit everything I wanted to inside with the power strip inside 
This 17 inch box is a little too small. If I were to do this again, I would get the bigger box, but it was about twice this, twice as much to go for that one. That's why I went with this one. So I may end up adding there, you can get just a little half size. And I may put one under there just so that I can have the power cores out of the way. Um, but let's take a look. So if I pop off this top panel here, we can start to get access. Oops. All right. So here is my networking box. I have all of my Comcast wires coming into this connector here and they all work great. I've tested them all out, but I'm not using Comcast or I will not be using Comcast anymore, but there we go. I also have the two phone lines coming in. They are RJ11. I just don't have the connector to connect these two together, but I would just have a connector and that'll work. And I have my extension cord for um, this power strip down here running out and it comes around the box and down to the bottom. I have the fiber optic modem and I have the line coming in or um, I should say going out to my router and then from the router I have a second line coming in to this ethernet switch and then I have a ethernet cat5e cable going all the way upstairs and then I have this little ethernet cable that powers this box here. This is for my smoke alarm and for my um, water sensors and things like that. So it all works great. My, oh, I keep running into stuff. The one thing I would change is this power strip at the bottom, but that works for now. It allows me to get everything I need to inside of the box and look, make it look all pretty and nice and neat. So I hope you liked this video so far. Please like and subscribe. I have more content to share with you. I hope you liked this video, and if you made it to the end of this video, I really appreciate it. And I would love it if you would like and subscribe so I can bring you more content. And just remember, as always, if you didn't like my video, feel free to go make your own video.